Okay, hi guys. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just going to look at how I go about generally modelling. Um, I'm not going to claim it's going to be the most fancy modelling tutorial in the world or anything like that, but I'll try and explain how I do some stuff. So, I actually managed to find some of my older Jovian Chronicles stuff that I've been doing, and kind of up to these HAB modules, so I decided I'd show how I do these. So this is the three-way of one of the habitation modules. Um, I've got a two-by here, obviously. Uh, well, different style. And another style. Um, they all have certain things in common, so we're going to use that stuff that they've got in common between them, but we need to start off somewhere. So if we have a look, the most common thing all of these have straight off the bat, other than the center ring, which I've actually already got, um, I've already made the docking ring, but is these pods, um, the HAB pods. So we're going to look at start modeling one of these HAB pods in Modeler just here. So, have modeler and you'll notice that I've got my display options up I've loaded in the background. Um, if you've never done this before it's actually quite simple and I'll show you I just need to remember the size is 200 and for in a moment. So I'm going to open my modeler here and if we go to display which is your D key you'll get this option and we come across to backdrops here and we can start setting up the backdrops we want so looking here we've got a front a top and a side view no, the side and the top are pretty much the same um, so this is our top view this is our front or back view, and this will be our side view. So first thing we want to do is get the image we want in, in this case have 3, and we want to set up its size, which in this case we're going to set 200 metres, and I want it at its maximum display resolution. Now of course the problem we've got here is this is off centre. Um, I tend to load all my images in and then center them up because I can cheat a little. Um, so I get this one in and we get this one in. So we have three images and at the moment they're not exactly a hundred percent lined up. What I want to do is this one's the closest one to getting itself lined up to begin with. So, like I said, I've got this center hab module already designed, but I'm just going to, for the sake of lining some stuff up here, get this roughly where I need it. So at the moment that's the right size but obviously it's not centered. So what I want to do now is center it up. Um, there's, an, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could just delete it, recreate it and tell it to be zero, zero, zero. Um, using the numbers numeratic pad it's like this, so we've just deleted it. We've gone disk again without changing anything. We've hit N, and you'll notice it's kept our radius settings. And then we just tell it that we want the center to be at zero, zero, zero. And this puts us at the center. So we can get one of our views sorted here. So we want our bottom left view, and we need to 
start moving things into alignment. So we need to come down probably about 5 metres and we need to come across probably about uh, 15 metres I'd say. No, okay, try 20. That lines that one up there and there. So that's that view lined up. Now we need to get this top one lined up. That's this view here. So in this case we want it to go up probably about 50 metres. No, okay, even further. 60, 80. Slide it up. And we'll bring this across to 30, which is close, but not quite. So there's that view lined up, and finally our side view here. need to bring it back, I'd say about a hundred. Oh, we actually weren't that far off. So, it gets it roughly lined up there, and then of course, negative ten. Oh. Negative ten. And we bring that up. Again, just set these up to our max. Now, of course we don't want to be doing this every time we close the project and restart it so what we do now is we go presets save all backdrops we call this one hab background setup dot config and what this will mean is we can restart and at any time we can come in here tell it to load the preset click that one and it will load these views up exactly as we have them at the moment So, with that done, I'm going to quickly um, load in a file here, and we'll do it this way. So, like I said, I've got the central docking ring segment here actually done. And if anything, it's telling me my scale's actually slightly out compared to what I have all the rest of my objects at. Um, so we need to correct this really quickly. Let's say it's 220, and of course, then we need to reline up the majority of our objects here. That's a little too large. Drop it down to 240. It's a problem when you haven't worked on something for a while, you forget the scales that you were working at. That's about as close as we're going to get it, I think. So, move that back. Or 230.
it's not going to be perfect and I know it's not going to be perfect I'm not after perfect um, we're more after near enough is close enough type deal so we have that all done we're going to quickly save out our backdrops again and take this docking ring um, going to come back here going to paste that docking ring for reference and of course we're going to do some modifications to it I'm going to bring it into line for our views here and I'll have the docking ring up for anybody who wants to follow this tutorial um, just to make things easier so you know people can't sit there and go but you didn't do it, you didn't give us the exact same start you'd had um, this, well, this view is still slightly out that'll have to do so we've got that on that layer and we're going to flip to here now, like I said, we're going to start on this shape here. And if we look, we can tell that it's a simple box. Um, I know for a fact that it's a simple box. And it's on a pivot. It's on a pivot through here. So, first thing we're going to do is save our file out and we're going to create a new folder here called Jovian and we're going to call this one Habitation Module 3 because that's what it is and I'm going to go to my layers panel here I'm um, going to jump to the docking ring here first actually and tell it that I want it to close, don't save habitation module and this is our central ring and this layer will be parented and will be the top habitation module. So it's just so that we've got some stuff done to begin with. Back to what we were doing, we need a square, so we're going to take our box tool, Shift X. And we're going to just map out the box. We can take note of some of the areas that we're going to have to put cuts in, like this, some grooves and the like in here. Well, for the most part, we just want the thickness and the like correct to begin with. So this is roughly correct and we'll notice that we've got a taper at the bottom and the top here we could do a whole bunch of beveling to begin with but this tape is fairly standard around this so we're going to hit N and we're going to come into our radius here and we're going to increase this up to about 2.5 and this is fine except we've now got this happening so what we want to do is we want to put in a couple of radius segments we can use rounder on this later um, and do exactly the same thing I just prefer to do it this way it's personal choice and 
and I'm not going to put any seg other segments in. I'm going to we're going to cut in anything else we need. So we've got this part. It's matching our center section here. But if we have a look, we can already see we've got an ending groove here. We've got built up area here and of course we've got all the panelling and everything on this I can't exactly see it in here but we can work it out we can kind of guess what needs to be done so first off we know that there's going to be a cut here we know that there's going to be a cut here and I just did a shift K which is the knife tool and drew the lines across then. The rest of this detailing for the most part I'm going to use another method on. Um, but what I want to do for this part is now I want to hit Shift H which will put us in polygon selection mode. Now I'm going to go to my multiply tool over here I'm going to tell it that I want to multi-shift. I'm going to start with a 5cm inset and a 40cm, uh, sorry, negative 40cm shift. That's going to shift this in slightly. I'll put another one in and on this one we're going to bring it up to 10cm here and negative 60 centimeters here and this just gives us this little cut in and a little bit of a bevel on it without us having to go in too early yet we can add an edge bevel which we're going to here um, so we select this edge we press the right arrow key and it grabs the edge loop for us. Then when we hit Control B and it brings up our chamfer selection. And we just draw it out a little bit. I just eyeball it to be honest. Uh, then we hit Control B again. Then I hit Control B again and add just another one. And we want to do this. Just a couple of times here. Just to take that hard edge. Off our um, model. So that looks a lot better. So that's the start of that segment. Um, now what we're going to do is start looking at some of this detailing. Obviously we've got the built up sections where the cross goes through here but we've also got all this plating and the like. So, I'm going to start on some of this plating. To do that, I go to a new layer and I keep this one in the background. I want to go back to polygon mode or shift H. And we want to start mapping out some of these polygons. So, we know looking, if we just turn this off, we've got this one here. And this one actually wraps around in a couple of places here by the looks of it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start drawing it out, but we want no edges on this. I just want a basic box. And I want this to be zero. Um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I can do it like a box like this, and then we can um, champ for a draw segments out or 
we can actually just go to our pen tool which is over on create pen and we can just start drawing what we're after here the thing here is that these actually wrap around it's kind of like a repeat of the pattern across the majority of this object so we're probably actually using the wrong view um, for what we want here but I'm actually only going to do half of this um, it's basically mirrored on a number of axes so we've got this one here at the moment we're going to copy it I'm going to make certain that they're definitely grouped so we just hit shift V and run a mirror down the middle. This gives us a template. Um, we've got some issues with this template and we are going to fix them. It saves us a lot of hassles later. So if we select both polygons and hit Shift Z, it joins them together. And we want to hit Control G, which will put us back into point mode. And we're actually going to make this a little easier to see. So we're going to jump to here. We're going to say that our edge Actually our colours here ain't too bad, we just need to change our edge mode, which is our sketch colour. Uh, I'm trying to remember where that is, I always forget. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time looking for it at the moment. There is a sketch colour option in here. Um, and what it does is it lets you... There it is. So what we do is we select this sketch colour. Change it to a dark blue. And it changes the colour that we get for this sketch when we don't have it selected and when we're in colour wireframe so we go colour wireframe on all of these the other problem we can see here is this one's not straight here um, we need to fix that as well and we want this so we can actually see it when we've got it selected I'm going to change it to a red so this just lets me see it on the white background so first off we are going to we've got two ways we can fix this hook shape here we can use a um, stretch and just stretch everything back to zero 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 on the x-axis here or we can tap V and we can just tell it that we want everything on zero 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 for the moment 
and we're just going to do that. So let's get back to fixing things up. We hit Control G, puts us in point mode. And we're going to select these two points. Then we're going to hit Control. Uh, we're going to hit Control H, select that poly. Hit Control G again, and then hit Control L. We're just going to go through and slice this up into polygons, into quads, just so that we fix some of the problems that are occurring. So, with that done, get all these facing the same direction. <coughs> that one doesn't exactly like us, but it'll fix up later. So we have the rough basis of what we want. Um, but we have a problem, because this isn't going to... We can't just extrude this. Normally, we go, oh, look, we could just want to extrude done. Um, and we can see that we've got some polys around the wrong way there. Which we'll need to fix. But we can't just do that because this isn't designed that way. It's slightly different. So what we're going to do is build the geometry. We're going to build out that way I'm going to copy this one, <coughs> paste it onto a new layer, rotate it, bring it round into the front view, and we can see kind of what we're going to be doing here. Um, We basically need to start playing join the dots. So, to begin with, we need these two points up here welded. We're only getting one at the moment, so... We select them. Control W weld them. Then there's a couple of ways you, other ways you can do this, and I will actually show you. Um, I'm just giving multiple choices here. Some people like to do things different ways. We're just going to actually run a bench, a knife down this segment and a knife down this segment here so we've got two cuts here we've got our front and we've got a side so we can get rid of this part and this is the side that we started working on so we can get rid of this side Start moving things. Keep them square. So at this point we've basically got the start of what we're after. We just need to thicken it. And luckily with 2015 and uh, 11 and the like, this can get, this is actually fairly easy. Because um, we can just use the thicken tool. So what I do here is...
I'll get this like so and then I'll tell it I want to thicken it um, and we can see that we've got a couple of problems here which we'll have to come in and address so we're going to undo 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 we're going to make certain that we've actually merged all our points which is M and then enter we're going to make certain we've got no two poly points we've got a couple of fours but that should be alright we're just going to run down this edge we're going to make certain we have everything welded we can check by that we know how many vertices we should have on each item the other thing I've noted we might notice just now is this is sitting basically on the surface or above our object underneath we want it under it so when we thicken it it projects from under and in so we can do this two ways first way is in in and as long as we've remaining our rough points we're all good and then we want to center that so that we can mirror it so we're going to mirror it again here and here now we're going to run that thicken again we're going to have a look at some stuff here we can before we start we can see that we've got a couple of problems with some poly angles so rather than starting the thicken first we're going to flip this one flip this one flip and flip so now when we do our thicken it's going to make a fall out of me uh, we'll fix it post so we're getting this problem on this edge here it's a rather ugly problem So we need to solve that problem. And the way I'm going to solve that problem is I'm actually going to undo to where I flipped all these. And I'll actually undo a little bit further, so back to this point. First off, looking at this, this should actually be a straight line anyway. So we're going to grab all these points. We're going to make it a straight line. And we'll notice that this set is already correctly lined up down here. So we'll get it roughly. And rather than using the value amounts here, which I should really do, I'm just using a H, pressing control, and then I'm just scaling it on one axis which was showing up down here to zero just brings them all in line I'm going to do the same over here start with this segment which is out of whack the most bring it back
bring it back in. Bring it back, and then we're going to select this one. We're going to run a knife across here. Across here. And split this polygon up a little bit. Flip, flip, flip. We're going to do a merge and make certain that everything's merged. And then like before, I want to move this set up. This set in. I'm going to make certain that those are all lined up. Then once again, we can either mirror and thicken, or we can just use the thicken. We can have a look here. We're getting a much better attempt this time. So, oh. thicken this out, and now we're just going to delete the inner vertices, select them, hit delete key. Mirror. which gives us our rough box looking shape here. We've got some stuff that we need to do, some more stuff we need to do to it, but gives us a start. So now we go back to this one, we bring it up on the back layer, we hit sh Shift C and we tell it that we want a stencil, and we'll call this surface default 1. And all that's done is it's cut the surface in but we can if we have a look we'll notice we've got a problem on this side it's not intersecting properly so something's not exactly square here what we can do here to fix this is the quickest way by the looks of it is actually going to be to move it's just slightly down. Just bring it back slightly, but we can still see it's going to cut, so that's not going to work. Instead, we will just stretch this a little bit. Switch our view back so that thing, shift C, default one. And if we have a look here, we've got a good proper cut this time. And just so that we can tell the surfaces apart. We'll have to do some fixing to these polys like we did before. But we've got to do some more slicing first. Um, though it's always good practice to do this type of stuff to begin with before you get really complex shapes and forget and cause more problems for yourself. So again, we're just control G. Um, we don't need that one at the moment, but looks we need to do it on that side. Do select, and you can lasso select by right-clicking and circling. If then that's how I'm doing the rapid deselections.
I believe we forgot to do that on one of these. There it is. So there we go, we've got that segment done. We need to start adding some of this extra detail items. So we've got two small holes here, we've got the circles here. And then of course we've got these two raised bits here, so these raised bits will do separate. Um, and on this side we've got this long line here. So, we'll remove this one. And we're just going to start with the next bit. So, I'm actually going to make these ones raised because we've got the circle for what looks like a porthole in the middle on these ones. But we do have the small circle. I'm going to presume that they're thrusters or something in here. So we've got one here. My wife's sneezing. We can run that through since these are symmetrical and of course we'll have these. So what we do now, shift back to this layer and we're going to shift C again, stencil, we're going to do it on, we're actually going to tell this one we want it back on default. So we've now got the hole through that surface. I'm going to rotate it, move it roughly into line, check it, shift, shift C, stencil it again, that gives us that one, so we've got our two circles. So on both sides, we don't need that anymore, uh, we need this line segment that comes up here. And I'm actually going to presume that it runs all the way down here. like so and then we're going to we only want this actually no we will do it through all just to make certain that we get the coverage we want but then we're going to select this set just here we're going to shift Z the poly on both sides and we're going to shift H and we're just going to remove these excess points that we don't need Now we're going to move to doing this set here, which is the part that we're presuming is raised, the two splits on either side of this circle. And we'll do the circle itself last. So, we come back here. Just looking, it looks like it gets something like this. 
You'll notice I didn't actually thicken these up. We're going to move them to off to where we need them. Control E, which is extra shift E I should say, which is extrude. And it seems we extruded in the wrong direction. F to flip the polys. The comma key to flip between forwards and backwards on our layers. And then shift C again. And this time we're going to call this one. We're going to use the default two layer, which will give us that set. And now we need to make our circle. It sits in the middle. like so we will shift C and solid drill that to there and finally we need to do this top sec section so looking at the top section we've got I'll show you the other method we could have used for the bottom here. Well, it looks like we've got a split with the circle type in the middle on this one, so we're going to draw out this segment, bring it up. So we've got a box, and we know it comes up, so what we do here is just so I'm not doing it a little slower. Shift F, which is a smooth shift, and we right click once, which will give us a new set of faces. Then we just move that set of faces up to where we want them. Then we grab either side here, Shift F, right click, and we can either turn symmetry on and move them, or we can press H and just stretch scale them out to where we need them. In this case, there copy our mirror make certain we're happy with how it's looking shift over we're going to make this a stencil 2 uh, stencil default 1 it's saying we've got a problem with our contour here and if we have a look we do this edge is falling right on this edge here so it's having problems working out how it's going to cut some of this. So what we can do to fix this is come in here and move this out a little bit here. Move it out a little bit here and on either end down here neither end here, we just bring it up a little bit we'll have to do some clean up later but it should be fine so like so you can see that we've got some problems happening with some of our polys So what we need to do is fix that already, we can tell that, I mean rather than selecting here, it's selecting this poly because it can't work out exactly what this poly shape is. So if we select that poly, select the points, control L, control L, and This one we may need to do a fix on a little bit further, but for the moment we'll leave it as it is. It's just that it's non-planular for some reason. Probably because of the curve here. If 
And what we can do when something like this happens, we can just triple the poly, or shift T, or we can divide it, cut it up a little bit more, um, because we've got to do some other work. I'll fix it when we get to the other work. Um, and the last thing we need to do is put the other port hole in up the top here. going to do actually I've just realized I've messed up the mirror here so we're going to actually undo a step so that's part of the reason we've got a problem there so coming back to here we're going to actually cut down here we're going to keep this side, but we're going to delete this side. Delete. Mirror. Come back. Shift C. Default one. And for some reason it's still not mirroring properly so we need to have a look at why to which we'll find that we're probably off centre slightly So if we, normally we'd be able to see where our um, face line on something like this is. There's normally a little line that you can see on the wireframe mode. It just sticks out. Especially if you've got the show normals ticked. So what we can see here is we're definitely not centered. This poly's in the middle. We're not centered. So we just want to try and center it up a little bit better. I mean we can just stencil cut and we'd be right but in this case we've still got problems but it looks like we're still not centered a hundred percent so what we're going to do because we're not centered this way either um, I think we'll find yeah we're not Try again. It's better, but we're still a little off. But because we're basically running an almost two way mirror here, we can actually fix this and get everything mirrored up again. So we run a knife edge through everything along the x axis. We run a knife edge for everything on the, sorry, on the Z and the X axis. Now we want to carefully get rid of everything on the side of the X. And we want to get rid of everything above this side of the Y. We want to remove any 
points in the light that aren't being used. Um, to bring this up, just hit the W key, it brings up the statistics. You'll notice that we've got this stray point here, get rid of it. We'll do a merge, make certain we've got rid of anything here. And we've got no two point vertices. Now we're just going to mirror on the X and on the Z. We get nice cleaned up geometry. Put in our disk at zero zero. And this one we're actually going to default as well. It'll end up being a cut down. So we've got the first part of our detail in. We need to look at this segment here, which isn't mirrored on the side here, else, or at least not too much and we need to add in the what looks like some extra reinforcement here so we'll get those done and then we will start on the actual detail building up a little bit more than what we are so in this case I'm going to do this rather quick and quick and easy way looks like that would come out like this, but we've got this little cut or groove in it now based on the based on how it looks it looks like they're ray sections so they come out just a little bit further than this section so I'm just going to put that box in. One, two, we get our mirror. We'll use default two for this slot, which gives us that. And then we want to get those little boxes in on the front and the back. Oops, I didn't actually mean to tap that, so we'll bring this out, extrude it. We've got the problem we may not be able to regenerate the contour properly here. Select default three, and we actually did manage to reproduce the contour, but we've got some issues happening here that we don't have happening over on this side. It didn't didn't cut properly, so we're lucky with. So if we do this, we can see the problems. We just hid the poly. Um, for some reason it's decided when it's done the stencil to add an extra poly in here. What we do is we just get rid of it. We'll get rid of this one as well. Hide this one. I'm just going to delete it on that side too. Show mirror mirror and emerge. It'll just get rid of any polys that aren't joined. 
I'll just check that. Yeah. So, at the moment we have a multicoloured looking monstrosity. And I have a foot that's caught up in leads that I'm not used to having. So, we're going to leave this part of the tutorial here. We're going to save and we'll start next time on detailing some of these out bringing out the panelling and some other items